Hello, Guardians, and welcome to Destiny Reset, Episode 175. This show is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, the Black Armory opened its doors. We talk about the new annual pass and how it delivers content, discuss upcoming balance changes to the sandbox, and finally hash out what titles mean in the game and why we're chasing them. Hello, Guardians, and welcome. It's Arrow Knights and, of course, Cyborg Sasquatch. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. How about you, man? I'm doing well. A little, uh, little tired. Yeah. <laughs> a little sleepy. You know, it's, this is the time of the year when <laughs> yes. when those content releases happen, you get less sleep. It's the uh, holiday season. Maybe everything's a little busier and new content's dropping. I'm doing the classic, like, Stay up till three, three thirty one night. Then the next night, maybe try to go to bed a little bit more normal. And then, yeah, the next thing the next night, <laughs> yeah, like sleep patterns are all over the place, man. Yeah, it's hard to nail down something that's going to be the same every night. But yeah. hey, we're here yeah. and we're recording. You're welcome. We're, we're recording. Do a show. I, I just tweeted out today, <laughs> man. Like I'm, I'm destiny, dude. Like I just look forward to every play session right now. <laughs> I don't know. About Absolutely. You. Yeah, like that's stuff I want to do uh, every Lots time I log do. in. Yeah, plenty to talk a, about. You know? I've got a real to do list. I have a destiny to do list. Sometimes mm-hmm. the destiny one is bigger. <laughs> not, Especially right not now. Not this time of year, though. No, not this time of year. Yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty. Well, let's get this show on the road. We've got a quick announcement, real quick, right? I think so. We have a yeah. winner of our nice little. Crispy giveaway that we were doing last week. We are giving away, or we were giving away, a Yeti Nano, Blue Yeti Nano, and a Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass. Um, man, you guys really like went crazy on that, uh, retweeting that thing. But we do have one lucky guardian that won. Cyborg, who is it? That's right. On Twitter, his name is Uncle Boss. Twitter.com slash boss C86. We're going to announce this on Twitter as well, but if you're listening, you are the winner. Congratulations. Booyah. Congratulations. We have to tell them, dude. Like, we just, it's it's Thursday night. We told you guys you had till Thursday night. We use a, a website that randomly picks someone, um, you know, because we like to keep it random and fair. But tell them who the first person was that. First that- person was not eligible to win because it ch- the, the believe it or not it randomly chose me how funny is that like almost 600 retweets and it chose you i mean yeah what it's like man i wish i had this rng <laughs> on destiny and i was gonna say this. you just used up all your rng on twitter and no because this was in months. destiny so i didn't i didn't use it it's a different <laughs> system too funny though but that's okay we 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 went again, we drew again, and Uncle Boss is the lucky winner. Yeah. And we'll have more giveaways coming up this month that you can take advantage of. So be sure to stay tuned and follow us on Twitter at Destiny Reset for more info. I think you're giving away a cool little uh Zer Mega Block set right now. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I just launched that today. I, I ordered one and then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna order an extra one and give one away. I didn't even know that thing existed i just yeah, came across you, it on amazon and i'm like I found that I too one day sitting yeah. in the closet um yeah so if you guys are interested there's uh it's like Zer and a guardian but there's also it, there's a exotic ingram that he holds and then there's uh i think it's monte carlo i assume that comes with it uh monte carlo yeah. it looks like zalo supercell and then mm-hmm. uh shoddy i don't know I, I can't remember what the shoddy is for sure um, yeah, like super cool some little guns for your mega block sky guardians yeah, yeah it's cool but yeah that's uh that'll be up till next thursday guys so check out my twitter feed if you would like to have an opportunity to win that there you go all right how about some news yeah dude there's all kinds of news man all kinds lots of, of news this week it's a busy time for destiny players this week at bungie the black armory opened its doors even though we're not welcome, but mysteriously, we're suddenly welcome. <laughs> we we met Ada <laughs> One because we had a cool key card from the spider. Yes. Um. So the forges 
are out in the world. Uh, by the time you hear this, at least two of them are live in the game. As of right now, we've only seen one. Mm-hmm. And um, Spoiler first, alert, there's supposedly a secret one, maybe. That's what I've heard. But it could be a secret else. forge. There's a couple maybe. secrets mm-hmm. found so far, at least uh, some breadcrumb trails. Right. Yep. You can go look those up if you want to see what they are. Since the whole thing hasn't really unfolded yet, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that Not too much. may like to find that stuff themselves. But there are things to uh, to find, even in the first Forge. Mm-hmm. Give you that. It's always exciting times when new content drops because I love uh, watching the community figure it out, right? That's always been a part of Destiny. Yeah. It's fun. So the first Forge dropped um, at, a, at a high power threshold. Mm-hmm. And that seemed to be a little bit uh, controversial. Uh, I've heard lots of different takes this week, but uh, Bungie was paying close attention and listening. And immediately on uh, Wednesday, I think it was, right? Was it Wednesday? Yeah, I think so. yeah yesterday. Yep. I mean, this was pretty quick. On the 5th, we're recording here on the 6th, uh, Thursday, they dropped the, uh, the power um, of each wave by five. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to make it a little bit more accessible for guardians that were around 600 power coming in. And, uh, you, you are going to need to at least be around the 600 mark to jump into these. Um, as well, they are, um, making some changes in the next update 2.1.2 on December 11th that will enable priming grams to drop more frequently and with larger power bumps for players under 600 power. Uh, mm-hmm. Previously, the patch that last dropped, that was only for players under 550. So it sounds like they're really trying to push to help people be able to access this content. Right, yeah. And uh, they also mentioned, we are also considering additional changes to assist with the power climb in a future update. We will continue to monitor your feedback on Season of the Forge as it continues. Yeah, I mean... So, what did you yeah. think about this con- Like this whole conversation? There was a big conversation on Twitter and oh, Reddit yeah. and everywhere else within the community about um, this first Forge. Um, the, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Do we want to we want to get into that right now? We yeah, we that. might as well because <laughs> yeah, they're talking well. about it. I think when it yeah. dropped the first wave, the enemies were six fifteen. I think they're six, I think, six ten. Actually, I I think that here's the question I had for you. I think it was always the first wave was six ten, the second wave six twenty five, and the third wave six thirty. Because yeah, I think that's when right. I, and then when it I dropped in, by five. Yeah, but but they did that on the server side, they said. That's the only thing. They, they were trying to do something for Yeah, they can the do that now. Yeah, and they did that on the server side. But if you go in right now, it still says 610 recommended power because I played it yeah. after they did this. So obviously they can't do anything. I assume when they do a server tweak like that, they can't actually do anything to the the UI without patching the game. Um, yeah. But I'm assuming the the enemies, obviously, are, the first wave now is at 6.05. What I thought was interesting was the jump from the first to the second wave, right? Um, mm-hmm. From 6.10 to 6.25. Um, big jump. Yeah, big jump. So anyways, I mean, definitely I th- that was really cool that they reacted so fast to the feedback and, and obviously agreed with the community. And, um, you know, we, we can just talk about that that initial thing with the forge there with the power level. I I think a lot of people are right. I'm if it was going to be one way or another, I would rather have to grind a little bit to get to that forge, but I completely understand where some guardians were coming from even that were 600. Um they're like, you know, new content dropped and I can't play it at the moment. But, you know, I I feel like we're also in that period where destiny is the structure is totally changing. Like we are right in the midst of that. Right. And to go do your normal reset stuff. Isn't really, I saw a lot of people referring to it like as going to grind the old content. I don't really think it's meant to be looked at that way anymore. Uh, It's not really, you're going to grind old content, right? You're, you're going to do the reset thing. You're going to get powerful. And I think part of this is a kind of a change and shift from the old, um, 
you know, the old DLCs that would drop structure. Yeah. And they would have kind of their own structure for powering up with their own activities. Mm -hmm. Some of those would include milestones such as the nightfall and some of the normal mainstays, um, you know, heroic strikes and different things like that. But, uh, the content now, you know, some of it is, are those things. Some of them are a mixture of, you know, like the dreaming city, um, and so there's a little bit of, I think, I won't call it fatigue, but I think people were expecting more in terms of like what's new that you can do pow- to increase your power. Um, and I think, so, so there's one way to look at it in terms of the content is they've specifically said like this content is in the game level content right like the annual pass is geared towards the hobbyist and for people that want challenging stuff and are typically on the higher end of power and have done a lot of the more powerful activities in the game they want something else that's a challenge part of part of the problem i think is that some people didn't totally understand that you know what this is um that's a messaging problem and a communication problem a little bit it's also a problem that some people just don't pay attention to stuff. They just see annual pass, you know, it's called season of the forge, whatever. Like that's all they know. So some people just aren't going to read stuff and there's not much you can do about that. Um, but on the other hand, having something come out at that power um, with no bridge really in between. See the, the weird thing that happened is a lot of the activities that we were doing pre uh, before this season, before you were 600, some activities would give you a bigger climb in power um, because you were still underpowered for them. So if you're underpowered for an activity, it'd give you a higher jump in light. Well, everything scaled in terms of offering uh, increases in power, but the activity power levels didn't scaled. So if I go play um, Last Wish Raid, it's still the same power level, even though it's going to give me higher drops. It's not going to give me drops at the same um, increase as it used to before I was 600. So now every single you know milestone and challenge that I go is, is a one, two, or three point increase per activity. So there's nothing there besides the forge until you beat that first forge to really help you climb that ladder. And it's a really slow grind and you can't just do that in a day. You know, you're looking at on the inside, you know, two, three days of heavy grinding to get in a comfortable position to do that forge activity, unless you're just really, really good. I mean, there's players that are going to go in at 600 and they're going to do it. But we're talking about some of the best players in the game, right? Like people that are just more than better than the average guardian, better than me. Okay, <laughs> put it that yeah. way. Like, yeah, and you're gonna have to put. It I some haven't time beat too. the forge yet. I haven't yeah, put a significant amount of time into it mm-hmm. because I put my time into leveling to get ready for the raid. But you know, I've, I gave it a few shots. We got to the boss. And we were kind of working on our strat for the boss and we had to, you know, somebody had to go to bed. It just wasn't, we we're like, well, we'll just, you know, we'll come back tomorrow when we're like 611 and do it then. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot, a lot more reasonable. And that's okay. I think the biggest thing that people feel and, and that I think is a valid criticism is that there's new content Tuesday and best case scenario for the average player, you're not going to play it until the weekend. You know, yeah, yeah. It's like, man, well, well that just kind of sucks, six hundred, right? It's it's oh, that classic thing, it's, and and this is the same yeah. problem we had with the raid. Mm-hmm. New content, very excited to do it, but grind as much as you want, unless you're just God's gift to Destiny players, you can't even access it. Yeah, and I think it's um, I think it's a philosophical problem over there, like with how they're expecting or what they want people to do in this game that's Mm -hmm. i think the bar is set a little bit too high 
Well, I think there's a couple of different things going on here, right? Like, um, it's one, can you imagine if the, the, there wasn't, let's say there wasn't, there was only one version of the forge. Okay. And mm-hmm. it was way easier than what we got Tuesday and everyone could beat it on the first or second pass. Right. People wouldn't be happy. Right. So they just got new content that they paid for and they just grinded through it in a matter of like one day. So we have the opposite of that right now. People can't even beat it. They can't even attempt it on the second wave for the most part because it's 20 to 25 power levels higher than them. So, yeah. you know, that's the challenge Bungie faces. I think There's, the other there thing wasn't is, a middle ground, I think. In- right. There's no middle ground. I, the, the best feedback I saw was it would have been cool because, I mean, the way you look at this is this is the first thing of many things we're going to get over this these next many weeks. Like this is the first tier of many tiers in this new structure. Like it's yeah. it's like it's like we're back in that position where us and Bungie, we know what we want out of Destiny now. We've all figured that out together. But now it's like, okay, what do we expect from this new structure? We're like yeah. in the very beginning stages of yeah, that. Yeah, and they're so, kind of in the yeah. the they, we're both in a different position because it's a new way of providing content yeah yeah it's a new activity yeah right you know and and i think um one of the best things i saw in the community uh feedback wise for this position was this is the very first tier of release in this new structure it's the first forge um it would have been maybe cool to have a an introductory like easier version of it to run and complete mm-hmm. and then the harder version unlocks. So at least you did. Yeah, and they have a unlocked. new one coming out this Friday. Yeah, it right. would have made yeah, total yeah. sense to have a, a little bit lower power activity this week to mm-hmm. teach people about it, have some rewards so that right. you can use it to start to power up a little bit. And then Friday when the new one drops, it drops at a more significant difficulty. Mm-hmm. And, yep. you know, do you remember back when, um, Prison of Elders first came out, you know, there was different levels of Prison of Elders that you could attempt as you powered up. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised they didn't do this the same way. Right. Um, Um, And have different word structures. And and the, the worst thing about it is like, apparently once you beat the first forge, there's stuff that opens up with Ada that you can do that, including yes. some milestones. Yep, um, yep. You know, other stuff you can buy and do, and other weapons. That's huge, you can... man. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is that's the other big part of this, and I think why the community, you know, a portion of the community responded the way they did is all of that stuff for with her, our new vendor, was locked. Just what you said. Yeah, it if was it's the locked very behind least... the first completion. If yep. at the very least we could have been able to do that without completing it, then maybe you could power up i don't know man it's 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 a tough nut to crack either way i don't think the implementation was perfect and i think that um it could have been handled a little better better i i was happy and surprised that they responded as quickly as they did with oh, yeah. you yeah. know even just great. dropping it 5 points did make it a little bit more within reach mm-hmm. um and you know i'd really like like i'm i'm going to plan this evening when we finish here to go and attempt it with a couple of friends. And I think that we'll be able to, to complete it. Um, but you know, I think this is a little bit of growing pains and, um, oh, for sure. Yeah. I think, um, I think their intentions were all good. You know, like their, their main focus I'm sure right now is to keep the hobbyist levels in the game and, and keep things coming week after week after week. And this probably launched and I know they're testing it and I know maybe they should figure this stuff out before it launches. But again, it, it, it does kind of seem like a bit of new ground for us and them with this new structure. And I think as quickly as they responded, they realized it too. And they're like, Hey, we're going to drop this. This is what we can do right now. Drop the power level. We'll probably yeah. do something a little bit more substantial. And, um, yeah, I think it is growing pains. I think we're, we're just in that first tier of this new structure of the game and um i I think uh i think we'll see in the many weeks to come that the overall plan of the hobbyists and stuff like that is is there i hope you know and and the other quick thing before we move on i wanted to mention a lot of people were i did see in the community too where they were talking about like what about the guardian that stopped playing at 570 Right. right and i'm like 
you know, my first response to that is they did say, I believe, in the Vidoc, like everything in the annual pass, not everything, but the the new stuff is in game stuff, right? Yeah. And it, it's kind of expected that if you didn't hit max light in the original vanilla release. I mean, that's just kind of the way games work, right? I'm not saying yeah. I don't want those guardians to not have anything to do there. There is other stuff for them to do, but I do understand they want to do the new content. So it's again, man, it's weird. It's a delicate balance. Like we can't expect them to release new content that you can do at 570 light, right? Like you well, kind of have I to stay up with the game. I think there is a middle ground that may be a little underserved or underrepresented here in that, you know, they are aiming to produce this content for a little bit of the hardcore audience and hobbyists, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But that but there's still guardians that play a lot of the content and maybe they don't spend as much time on the grind. So maybe they for did sure. the raid once or twice. Mm-hmm. And they did the Shattered Throne once, or maybe they didn't. And they did some some things, and then they, they stopped playing, or they played a lot more casually. But they, in the past, would still keep up with DLC releases and come back to play new campaigns in new activities. And for that Guardian, they're looking at this like, holy cow, that's like 60 power. Right. Like, I'm not even close to being able to and play that. And it takes that. a while to grind and the they're, power, right? they're yeah. definitely gated from it. You know, mm-hmm. forget yeah. the 600, like they're pretty far away from that. And so I think that's where um, they are trying to do something there with the bigger power bumps with the prime engrams to help those mm-hmm. players catch up a little bit. I think it's um, important. So, you know, this is a, this is a new thing. This is a new idea. And unfortunately, you know, we've talked about this so many times, like they cannot do and be all things to all people. Right. They are going to have to kind of pick their battles and decide like what kind of player can we serve? So I think some releases are going to have wider appeal and some things like some of this annual pass content may have a, a much more narrow appeal to a more specific player. Mm-hmm. Um, and so some of those people may feel a little bit left out. Unfortunately, I don't want that. I right, want yeah. as many people as we can to be able to play the game and be involved, but well, yeah, and you do what, wonder you know, about like, yeah, fracturing the player base, right? And that's something they don't want to do either, you know. So I'm hoping they can find a balance of what the stuff that comes with the seasons that you maybe even don't need the expansion for the annual pass, and then stuff that does that you do kind of for the hobbyists. You need to keep grinding that power, um, you know. I, I think I do completely understand that. I mean, I just hit 600 a couple of resets ago, right? And I play, I pretty much only play Destiny, and I play a few nights a week for several hours, and mm-hmm. I consider myself a hobbyist level destiny player but i just hit 600 a couple weeks ago so that power level grind is real so you're probably yeah. right there's guardians out there that are 570 580 that only play destiny but with the time they have they just aren't able to reach 600 so i agree i think it's important what they did uh, what's going to come in the patch i guess as you're listening to this tomorrow uh, is that like bump in those priming grams and stuff to try to get guardians up to 600 uh, there's just there's so many things at play here I, every now and then i wonder i'm like man the the structure of the power level and things like that, like is something broken here? Is it something they need to look at? But then overall, you know, I think, you know, I didn't play WoW a lot, but I think about any game like that. I did play um, Star Wars, the Star Wars MMO quite a bit. I mean, usually, you know, when new content comes out, like a new raid, new this, like you got to go grind the things and prep for it, right? And I, I guess in a way with new content destiny isn't any different right i mean new content yeah. you got to grind the content you got to get up to that power level that that level and then you can go run that content i think the big thing here was is there was something new and you couldn't run it i totally understand that an introductory like portion of the forge maybe would have been good for this first iteration the only to end on it this conversation the only argument that i didn't fully understand is I, I did hear that like people were thinking like this is all we get is a forge and and I, I I feel like maybe they thought about it and realized it but like again it's it's a totally new structure for us guardians uh, yeah I, Destiny, the people right? like saying this is the that, first I think are just thing. people that are obviously not paying attention to what is being offered they they may not even be aware like of the release schedule. They may yep. just see like it's it's a hard thing after 
you know, an industry doing things a certain way after Destiny right. doing things a certain way for a while to change that model. And mm-hmm. there's probably people who still see it as, you know, yeah, the, this is the DLC, right? Like, this right, is the, yeah. Yeah. the thing. Oh, wait, this is all we're getting in this DLC? This is the worst, this is what I keep hearing, this is the worst ever, DLC yeah. ever. Like, yeah. well, you, okay, great, but you've only seen an eighth of the content, so what do you know? Right. You know, it's, it's going to yeah. be staggered out and... Um, it, that's and then you wonder, just to- like, like, and I don't you, mean this in a malicious way. It's just totally ignorance, I think. Right. Speaking, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say too. And, and actually, our team was talking about that in our Discord um, today. Like, you don't necessarily want to blame the player for that because some people they don't even know the TWAB exists, right? That's what our team right. was saying today. And, and it'd be cool if we had a tool tip in the game that sh- that showed that, or even I, you could I think go that, out I mean, to a browser. Destiny for- needs a news feed so badly, dude. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. so many games have it. They, they, every, almost every game of this type has a news feed. Yeah. Cause all you can and, do right now is like, you can hover over a node and it says what patch it is and go yeah, to this URL. Right. They to may have a splash screen for a new, this season they have a new splash screen for the season, you know, but right, yeah. they, they so badly need the, the TWAB and for, uh, Anything that goes in the news section of Bungie.net, like Mm -hmm. they need to have that in the game accessible Mm -hmm. on like when you go to orbit. Like, yeah, and you, it's not like it needs to be pull up necessarily in a browser in the game because no, many I mean, games, it's, like once you click through it, it opens the console browser, right? Right. Like in the exterior browser. Yeah. Um, every, so. every console has a browser now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think if, that's, yeah, that's I would love cool to see thing. that because just because of what it would do on a broad sense for the player base being mm-hmm. like more in tune with what's going on and, well, Cause you're right. I mean, dude, times, I will run right? into people like I'll play with, you know, just random folks like friends of friends sometimes and, you know, the occasional LFG player and I'll be talking about something or people will be talking. They're like, wait, what? Wait, what are you talking mm-hmm. about? Like, when does this come out? Like, what is this? And uh, you, you gotta sit there and like read the news to them. And I'm like, just go to go read the TWAB. You know, they're like, they oh man. Don't know. I, yeah. I never read that, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> when we talked about that in so many different levels over the years, right? Like, I, I actually just thought about it this week. I was grinding. We'll talk about it in Reset, but I was grinding Strange Terrain for the Nightfall uh, loot there. And I'm like, I wonder how many Guardians don't even know there's Nightfall-specific loot. You don't yeah. ever think about that. Where did, when does it, we, You talked about that before, like the game showing you things or telling you things. When Does it ever tell you? It doesn't even tell you what... Like when you go select your strike, the night one of your nightfall strikes, it doesn't tell you there's right. specific loot, right? So yeah, there's guardians it's... out there playing that probably have no idea there's nightfall specific loot. Right. right. You don't think about that. Yeah. Um, anybody listening to this podcast, but I bet there's plenty. Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah. I mean in in a game like this is so big that there's a certain amount of like investment that you have to have as a player to really know yourself the yeah. game. And explore and be a part of communities. And I think that's a good thing. Like, definitely. I don't think every single detail and aspect, and like, I don't think there needs to be a significant amount of hand holding, but there's some things that it's like, you know, this could be, this could be explained or this could be inform, more informative or, you know, it's, it's not like the whole reason that I, got involved in the destiny reddit community was because i was like playing destiny one and i was realizing like there there's stuff in this game that i'm not even seeing like i can tell like what is going on here like Mm -hmm. what is this like what you know and even then like things were not as in deep as they were but i started exploring and looking for what other players were finding and uh there was a whole world that i wasn't even aware of in the game you know like Yep. yep The raid, like I didn't even know there was a raid in Destiny until like (laughs) it came out and Reddit explained that to me, you know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um. Anyways, again, delicate balance, man. Getting way out here on a tangent, but uh, there's so many things they got to think about. So many different types of players they've got to think about, and it's just all over, man. Like it's it's got to be such a challenge, right? Yeah, it's a big game. There's a lot to to think about as a developer and anyways um 
you know, I, I'm looking forward to the rest of the Forge content rolling out and uh, being able to play all of it. You know, it's a little bit of a rocky start, but I think uh, once players power up and this gets a little more momentum, I, it looks like it it could be fun and promising, you know. I agree. So, yep. Um, yep. next up over in the TWAB, uh, we've got a preview for the Scourge of the Past raid. Uh, which launches for us tomorrow, that being Friday morning. And uh, this is set in the last city. Uh, seems related to the Black Armory somehow. Ada's sending us out to uh, get some kind of important um, item, MacGuffin, for the Black Armory, I suppose. <laughs> um, some interesting context clues they provide here for the world's first race they, they mention uh dust off your sparrow collections you're going to want the right perk right look for crossing the finish line it sounds like we're finally getting that one thing on every raider's wish list which is a sparrow <laughs> section in a raid oh yeah they've teased it right this sounds yeah. awesome so i'm so looking forward to racing in the raid and on a sparrow uh, yeah i'm excited man like i'm gonna do my usual for this one and and watch the race and yeah. they've got me pumped about this one just relating it to um uh, wrath of the machine and like the quick pace and this or that and the action uh kind of and the setting too the settings just so so surprising yeah yeah so they mentioned the last safe. city is no longer safe mm-hmm. I, you're I'm, going in you're doing the blind thing with your fire yeah we're gonna do a blind ride uh this weekend hopefully we will be powerful enough. It's yeah. That's what I was going to ask you, man. How are you so feeling they, about the? the they're power recommending six forty. So here's here's the kind of the questionable aspect. So when they gave the power rating for Last Wish, I believe when they recommended it was um, maybe six thirty or something like that, and that was lower than the first encounters level so like when you went in the first encounter it was higher than what they recommended it was very confusing and then it scaled up you know dozens of power points beyond that so it was very confusing i'm my guess and my hope here is they're recommending 640 i'm thinking that may be like on the upper like i'm thinking if they they're doing it properly the first encounters are going to be lower than that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it may skip because if the power cap is 650, you know, the, the last encounter is probably got to be between 640 and 650, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, I can go in somewhere between 610 and 625 and, and, and at least be able to, tackle some of the first encounters that's 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 our hope um i'm i'm really hoping that it's not going to be handled the same way as last wish um that remains to be seen by the time people hear this they'll know but <laughs> yeah i mean in the the power level grind is still legit man like it's uh yeah I mean, it's i've done funny, several things um, this week and i'm like 603 i mean i haven't done everything yeah but, it's, uh, it's funny that so, so somebody's already hit 650 I don't I know saw if you that. saw that on Reddit. It was yeah, pretty insane. Yeah. I mean, they were really like working the system and stuff. I've seen some, you know. Yeah, they like stream. I've seen some of the streaming bounties, community. Right? Yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah. I've seen some of the streaming community that are already uh, in the 630, 640 range, which is not too surprising, but, you know, they're a lot more equipped than they were for Last Wish. And so I don't expect that this is going to be another 24 hour raid. Uh, for worlds first, but I, I just hope that for me, and I've been playing a lot, you know, six to eight hours, uh, an evening this week, um, mm-hmm. that I'll at least be able to access it. I'm, I'm 612 on one character. If I can get, you know, 616, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do something you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I hope so. so too, man. I hope you can do, uh, I mean, all you were asking on the last one, you know, your feedback. And then now with this one is to be able to get at least a decent portion into the raid. Even yeah. If you can't be, let the me final get a boss, couple, right? let me get into a couple encounters at least, you know, and if I hit a, uh, a wall, so be it. But right. 
at least uh, at least I'll be able to give it a several. shot, and maybe get a couple rewards, you know. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, but um, they do mention uh, there's going to be a scourge of the past, uh, scourge of nothing emblem if you defeat the raid in the first 24 hours. Um, there also is another exclusive raid jacket if you defeat the raid by 9 a.m. Pacific on December 12th, you'll get to claim the jacket. It's similar in form to the Last Wish jacket. It's a different color with some different patches. Very cool. Yeah, they give you. What did the first? Was it the first weekend too? Last time it was last just the first twenty four hours. I think hours. you had to beat it in twenty four hours. I think right? before. I think it, I can't I remember think if just the emblem was. Maybe the emblem was the first twenty four hours. 24. I think the jacket might have been before reset. Mm-hmm. Um, this one you actually have. Um, they're given an extra day. Right for the yeah, jacket, so like a little bit you'll have an extra day of that next reset to go in to try mm-hmm. to get it. So that's you know a little little bit better odds there. <laughs> yeah, little why bit don't better um, to try to get it? Why don't you tell us about some of this crucible news, man? Yeah, dude, this is uh, I, well, it was funny because I was browsing the uh, DTG subreddit this week. Like there were a lot of posts. Like there was one just asking if there was a crucible team anymore. <laughs> like people just feel like they Bungie has been communicating very well, like they have been for some time now. But we ha it has been a little bit since we've gotten like a direct feed um communication of the current sandbox, right? Like we've gotten little mm-hmm. snippets, I think, here and there, but like something official in the TWAB. But like It's almost this, like they're working on something. Right. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely time to hear about some things in the crucible. I do feel like the sandbox, obviously it's way more chaotic than we had in vanilla D2 by design. The community said they were bored yeah. with the extreme balance we had in vanilla yeah. D2. So now it's, it's definitely fun. It's a bit more chaotic. There's a lot going on. The main thing that I was pumped about here, dude, I, I tweeted out like, I don't even know a week or two ago. I don't even remember word for word, but I said something like, as much fun as I'm having in the Crucible right now, because I am, I really wish Power Ammo had, we need, like, it would be, I think it would be good if we would increase the timer on Power Ammo. I feel like Power Ammo is everywhere. (laughs) And sure enough, here we are. We hear from Mr. Josh Hamrick, and in competitive games, I'm surprised it's just competitive. I guess quick play is supposed to be kind of fun, chaotic, like run around with all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but in competitive, um, they will be increasing the power ammo timer uh, in all modes. So we don't have to say what it is for every mode, but the gist of it is it's increasing from 45 seconds um, in a couple examples to 120 seconds. Even in survival, it's going from 45 to 60. Um, so yeah. it's, it, I think this is, I think this is going to be good, dude. Like there's so much going on in the crucible now. There's so many different powerful options, having shotguns and fusions and all this stuff and in, in your primary and secondary slots, if you will, that I think it's okay if we don't get power ammo every 45 seconds. I thought it was every minute. I didn't actually like, uh, every time I would jump in and play, I'm like, wow, power ammo is already up. I didn't actually like pay attention to what the timer, the initial timer was, mm-hmm. but dude, it just, I don't know how you feel, but it seems like power ammo was up constantly. Like I it, just, I don't play enough crucible to comment on it. So <laughs> dude, it, 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 to me, and, and I know I get it. Like maybe that's why they're just doing it in competitive and, and I'm glad they're doing it competitive first. If they were going to do it across the board first in competitive is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want it to seem like, I mean, that's the whole thing, right? You want the power fantasy, you got supers, you want to do this or that. Um, but there just seems like there's so much power ammo in the crucible right now. You can't even like by the time 45 seconds into the, the game, you know, your shotgun isn't even effective because somebody's shooting war cliff coil at you, right? Mm, um, yeah. so anyways, long story short, they're increasing the timer on power ammo. Um, they do, uh, Talk about a lot of stuff here. Hamrick mentions like everything the community's been talking about for the past month. Well, um, and they have, um, it's, they mentioned design lead, 
This is the coolest name ever. John Sandwich. <laughs> what an amazing name, my friend. John Sandwich. John and Joe and Sandwich. <laughs> so, yeah, they say that uh, um, they even talk about uh, the concern of buffing snipers. Um, and a lot of this stuff is, hey, we're looking at this. I know sometimes the community gets annoyed with that. But, you know, that's part of the process, right? This being in the TWAB, acknowledging they're hearing our feedback, acknowledging that the team's looking at it. That's what most of the Reddit posts were referring to. It was, hey, like, we've been talking about this for a while now. We haven't heard anything. So just, you know, sum up some of this stuff. They say snipers are definitely one archetype. We are actively looking at making changes to um for example, later in January, rapid fire snipers will move to a two body shot kill. And this is a big one, dude. I loved this about Destiny 1. They're also considering allowing more snipers to be able to one shot supers on headshots. Yeah, that's um, a big one that I think people that's would like. A big one, dude. I'm, I, I am surprised, one. though. Um, they mentioned that they don't have any plans to alter sniper flinch. Yeah, that was that was surprising because that's been a hot topic for a while now, right? Um, mm-hmm. The the how how much you feel like you get flinched. Um, the the other thing they mentioned too is the lower zoom scopes. Uh, they do exist in the game, they say, but post forsaken weapons um, have been largely largely limited um, to. I guess there's not many forsaken weapons that have these lower zoom scopes. I don't know because I still use my OG. Blue Aachen LR2 from year one. There's a year two version too, but it's got ambush on it, dude. And I can't, it's hard for me to use any other sniper because it's got that old school D1 ambush scope on it. Um, but it would be nice if we could get some snipers with some, uh, some lower zoom scopes. Now here's the other big one. This is great to get acknowledgement, right? Nova warp with like a gazillion question marks. They say, yep. Nova Warp Super is too dominant right now, and we are planning to tweak it. It's current, currently slated to land with a patch in January. Late January, actually, more specifically. I do feel like late January seems like a ways away for yeah, some of this stuff to get a patch. Um, a but, wild. you know, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So, not to spend too much time on every single thing they talk about here, but they mentioned Spectral Blade, Hit Detection, and other melee supers. They're looking at, you know, Sentinel and stuff like that. Specifically Sentinel, yeah. Yep. Um, pre forsaken oh. subclasses getting a buff that yeah that's they, they exciting. are looking at that yep so that's that's a big one there um, that'd be nice to get some at least for those original subclasses to feel a bit more powerful they are looking and talking about things like one eyed mask and shards of Galanor those different exotics that seem pretty powerful uh, again you know another thing to think about too is back in the day. Um, when I'm sure their intentions were still good, but communication was a little bit lacking. A lot of this stuff we would have never heard anything about, right? Yeah, um, not so until, it's, you know, like they had a change in store. Change in something, yeah. So, like, this it's, it's another thing to keep in mind, right? For example, I heard about Nova Warp. Now they're talking about Telesto. Um, yeah. they, they're acknowledging that Telesto is definitely powerful right now. They say in late January, you will find that Telesto's bolts to kill will now match its charge rate, where it was previously doing more damage than other fusion rifles of its type. So they are going to make some uh, tweaks to Telesto, mm-hmm. uh, probably a bit of a nerf uh, to sorts. And then um, a little bit here on scout rifles, feeling a bit weak in PvP. Um, SMGs, can they get non precision, precision damage buff? Um, they did recently buff SMGs to make them more competitive and they'll be monitoring that fusion rifles get a buff. Another archetype we are looking into. Um, they did bring the, the rapid fire fusion damage up here just in this last patch that we got. Here's one. I was surprised with the answer, dude, wave splitter. Okay. Wave splitter. You haven't played much crucible. Have you played enough to run into somebody with wave splitter? Well, Wave Splitter is PS4 exclusive. Oh, is it really? Okay, yeah. so you wouldn't have, dude. I didn't. I forgot it was PS4 exclusive. Sorry, I didn't mean to rub that in, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <It's>, no, I haven't. <laughs> you don't want it. You don't want to have it in the game. It it absolutely melts, dude. I threw up a clip weeks ago when I was really? still working on my Luna, trying to get hand cannon headshots, precision kills with my trust with with people shooting Lunas and not Forgotten's at me. Wave Splitter, dude, just melts you like i got i think i spawned in that clip like two or three different times and just was melted by wave splitter within like a minute's time that thing 
is crazy, but it's fine. You know, the, again, the crucible is a bit more chaotic place now. It definitely, I, I think there's no question. It needs to be tweaked a little bit. I'm all for powerful exotics, but it's, it's crazy powerful, dude. But their answer was, it's not at the top of our list, but we do intend to take a look at it. First, we want to take a look at global ammo economy for trace rivals and PVP, and then we can take a look at wave splitters effectiveness. Yeah, they, so, they kind of keep tweaking, uh, trace rifle ammo and different stuff right. to try to make those fit well because from what i understand like if you can use them trace rifles are really powerful oh yeah in yeah. pvp but they're they're really tricky to use you know because mm-hmm. you can't yeah. like the, the, they're just so squirrely trying to get those precision shots on a moving target you know mm-hmm. yeah i'll have um, to send you that clip too dude because I don't know. I don't know if maybe wave splitter. I don't know the numbers. What's um, the, what is the exotic like perk? Like what does wave splitter do that's different? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't, I don't even okay. know. I don't even I, have I don't it, know. Man. I've never played yeah. with it and nobody yeah. talks about it. I just know that it, it, so mel- know. it has melted my face <laughs> many a time. <laughs> you just know it hurts you so good. In the crucible. Yes. So, you know, again, powerful exotics are fine, but that thing definitely, I, I got to send you the clip now. Probably, I'll probably do it tonight or tomorrow just so you can see that thing. Okay. Um, but the next one, Titan Skating. This one was kind of surprising to me, too. They say, Titan Skating is rampant on PC. Do you plan to remove it? We'd like to fix this. However, we're being careful about how we do so because it's so closely tied to the core feel of lift, the lift ability. Uh, they say, in other words, we don't want Titan Skating, a Titan Skating fix to change the way the lift ability feels for all players. So. Yeah. They're looking at it, but they're looking at it differently than I thought they were going to say. A lot of the community is saying, like, we had Titan skating for so long, it just feels like Titans should be able to do that. We know that that means Titans are faster than Hunters, and they're not supposed to be. So I was thinking maybe we would hear something about keeping it in the game and maybe trying to figure out a way to bring it back to console, but it doesn't seem like that's I don't think they viewpoint. want it in the game. They I don't think Titanus skating yeah. is something they intentionally like they don't tuned want out in Destiny mm-hmm. 2 to because Titan skating was a mistake. Like they right. <laughs> the game was yep. not designed to make Titans be able to skate. And so they fixed that in Destiny 2, but once PC came out, there was a way for players to to do it Still again it. because of the way that you can handle controls with mouse and yeah. keyboard. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think, think you're right. It, I, think I think they don't, I think it, you're right. They don't want I think it in it, the game. It doesn't break the game, but it, it allows players to do things in the game that, um, you shouldn't, you know? <laughs> right. Well, it's way more Titan skate, skatey oh, it's on PC fast, than it man. ever insane. was. Uh, and, it, and the Dawnblade is crazy too, man. When the Dawnblade's in super, um, I'm sure you've seen yeah, PC clips of that. But you can get but, pretty uh, fast with that on console, too. That's yeah, not yeah. just so, a PC thing. So, you know, thing. it's it's one of those weird things because while, like you said, it was never really supposed to be a thing, we all got, all of us Titans got so used to that mobility that mm-hmm. it feels like it's the way of the Titan, but it's not really what they had intended for the Titan class, right? And I think you're right. They don't. They, they don't necessarily want it in the game. But the thing is, is it would be nice if it either existed everywhere or not at all, right? Right. So it'd be nice if they could they could take care of it. <laughs> yeah. It but would. that's okay. It would. That's, that's pretty much, uh, I mean, that's pretty much everything uh, that we got in the TWAB here on that. It's, it's nice, again, to get that communication. Um, again, this is uh, Hamrick that's talking to us here. Um, but I think, I think it's important periodically just like everything else that we hear about the sandbox and how it relates to pve but also very specifically to the pvp community right just communication every now and then just like we get with everything else and again though i don't i don't know that the pvp sandbox is as much of a primary focus as it was before right i'm not Mm -hmm. saying it's i'm sure it's important to them and there's obviously the team is watching it and, and listening to the feedback. But I think I think it's the power fantasy of destiny is the focus right now and the the amount of hobbyists and, and continuing content coming into the game, right? Like it's right. important for us to feel like guardians right now, not balancing a competitive PvP sandbox, right? Yeah, I think to you know, to my great pleasure. 
<laughs> yeah. They're focusing more on a fun game than a balanced game right now. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I think that that is tough for the competitive PvP community because they, they love the sandbox that Destiny provides. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it is a lot of fun, you know, but it can make the competitive aspect of things frustrating sometimes. Oh yeah. Um, well, you know, and there's there's a lot of the team too that are super competitive PVP players, right? The Bungie team. A lot oh, of these, yeah, absolutely. These, yeah. these guardians on the, their team working on this. Um, I mean, even you know, like Tocom that that spends a lot of time with the ranked and stuff like that. They, I mean, they want to see a competitive scene. Again, it's just such a weird balance with Destiny because it's supers, it's the power fantasy, it's this or that, and I mean. You go back and you talk about Vanilla D2 and, and a lot of Guardians thought that Crucible sandbox was boring. But man, what is it? A a balanced sandbox accomplishment, right? Like it was crazy how many weapons and things we had in the game and abilities, but how balanced it was. Now, it did many times into many Guardians seem kind of boring because we're Guardians with supers, we're superheroes. So now we have more of that power fantasy. But like you said, I think they're focusing more maybe on that right now than, um, again, like you said, balancing the the esports competitive scene of the game, right? Yeah. So anyways, it's still good to hear stuff and get communication from them about what they're looking at absolutely they mentioned that they do want to plan to have um they want to roll out smaller batches of patches more frequently we want to bring up things whenever possible but when we do need to bring something down we're going to try to inch it down and into the correct location Mm -hmm. which they've been they have been dropping quite a few patches there just hasn't been a lot in them pertaining to the pvp sandbox right yeah Lately. Yeah, I think that's what people are looking for. A little more PvP sandbox tuning. So, um, we've get a preview for the dawning. Dawning drops, uh, December 11th, real soon here. And man, I love this sparrow. Gotta get this <laughs> so sparrow. <cool. laughs> it looks like a big sleigh if you haven't seen it. So we got a little mm-hmm. post on the dawning. Uh, Eva Levante returns to the tower to help us celebrate this year. Uh, and we get kind of a, a, a new fun mechanic, uh, to make the, the dawning interesting. So we get to collect ingredients from playing activities and bring them to Eva, who has a little oven who will cook up <laughs> special treats for you to bring to other NPCs. Um, I think some of the ones they mentioned were, uh, Man, what were they called? There's some really funny ones. The treats, uh, yeah, Galler doodles, yeah, and chocolate Galler ship, doodles. yeah. There's a whole bunch of them apparently, and uh, so you gotta cookies. put together different ingredients to figure out what'll give you the right um, products, and then you'll be able to give those to, uh, I guess, to NPCs throughout the solar system who will then give you things in turn. That's usually the the theme with dawning is you give gifts to the Mm -hmm. the NBCs and then they give you something. As I read this, I was like, man, this kind of sounds cheesy. (laughs) But then the more you read it, it actually sounds fun. You know, like they even say there'll be bounties to complete along with your cookbook that will award you things like enhancement cores, mods, legendary gear. Um, It's fun. There's a new, new machine gun. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it'll be fun. The, did you see what the, what the sparrow actually does? Yeah, um, so apparently it, it, as you drive, it, it drops you glimmer, a little <laughs> like glimmer presents. presents yeah. that you can pick up. That's pretty yeah. funny, man. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's cool, man. It's a nice little little touch for the event, right? Yeah, very, very much. Uh, and it also has, like, if you do tricks, it gives you more glimmer presents. And then it also has instant summon. I um, immediately was just thinking about guardians riding around everywhere, trying to land tricks to give everybody presents. Like, I think yeah. it'll be a good little vibe out in patrol and stuff. Yep. They're also going to have some triumphs to earn. Uh, I think as you mentioned, there's going to be a, a avalanche heavy machine gun with random rolls. Uh, and then you, there also be uh bounties to complete. Um, and you'll be able to earn enhancement cores, mods, legendary gear. Uh, looks like of course there's, uh, some armor, uh, and then there will be, um, the new, you know, engram drops, uh, a dawning engram that you'll get on leveling up along with your, uh, 
your other engrams you'll get this season. They show off uh, a ship, a uh, cool ghost shell, and then they've got some pretty cool multiplayer emotes. So apparently these uh, are, you know, we've ha- we had like a kind of multiplayer emotes in Destiny 1, but they always didn't always work great. Mm-hmm. So apparently these are a lot more functional. You, you, one player will initiate it, and then if the other player goes up and does the emote, it kind of locks you in to sync cool. it up. Mm-hmm. So they Very show cool. like a high five. Um, there's a really funny uh, hockey like throw down emote that I know a lot of people are excited about. Um, this one I the love. Shit, dude, looks cool too. Yeah, there's an exotic way. emote where you bake some cookies. Oh yeah, dude, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. And then they mentioned they're going to have um, some of the ingredients to buy um, for Bright Dust, if you like. Now, you will have to earn a currency called Essence of Dawning that you can only get by playing activities in the game. So you can't just totally buy your way through this, but you will be able to uh, get some extra ingredients with your Bright Dust. So that's a you know nice thing to uh, be able to throw some bright dust in if you've got a lot uh and then finally dawning ends tuesday january 1st as i predicted yep, yep. i'm hey, so good i don't at that, know if man. we the, the one sentence that stood out to me the most and we kind of talked about these treats but it says once you have your ingredients you can start combining them to create some tasty treats do you think um oh they say yeah we'll, we'll give you a few recipes to get you started but it's up to you to try different combinations and discover which one turns into the most delicious cookies do you think there's actually like some mystery there to combining them? Or do you think it's going to be like pretty straightforward? Like this is what does this. I don't know. We'll have to I see. <laughs> That's like know. kind of a tease. I I, like it would be cool if there was a little and... bit of depth there to where like you, because they say somewhere, oh, there it is. Be careful. Mits, mismatched ingredients result in burnt edges. So it does seem like there's going to be like a little mechanic there where you're actually like crafting Mm. a recipe right and you could get it wrong i don't know that's cool let's see can i make sensu beans <laughs> um next up over in destiny player support uh they mentioned we get an update 2.1.2 on the, the 11th here uh they don't have a timeline exactly but i'm sure it'll be what we normally expect uh we get a let's see scourge of the past unlocks an edz map on the seventh and they say be sure to uh log back out log out log back in to see that um they get some known issues of course we mentioned something going on with blind well matchmaking uh and some other stuff you have to usual. read that sentence we talked about we were laughing about this off air guys the blind well matchmaking they're investigating reports regarding players entering empty instances of the blind well in the dreamy city while we are working on a fix, affected players should try entering the blind well slowly, which we knew about that. But then it goes on to say, hugging the right side staircase and hallway walls. Yes. <laughs> so do that, Guardians, until they patch this. Hug the right side staircase and hallway walls, walking slowly into the blind well. I'm only giggling just because it's so specific, is what yeah, we were talking about. It was it's pretty such funny. a specific thing. <laughs> I got to get out of that. Like, why that what's specific way fixes it is what's you know funny <laughs> it's always been a thing in destiny to like slowly go into the the different instances of a patrol right. zone right um but nothing that specific yeah well then we've got uh our movies of the week definitely want to check those out and uh we got three of them this week two yeah. want to mention movie of the week and then two honorable mentions um and then finally they wrap it up. Now we had uh some patch notes, of course. Um a couple things in the update with the sandbox worth mentioning. Um to start off, they've tuned some issues with Chaos Reach finally, which is the uh, Warlock Arc new Warlock Arc Super. Um so it it gives you a little bit better advantage of timing that deactivation properly. It doesn't cost you quite as much to activate the super. Um, I played around a little bit with that last night and it, and it was definitely more effective if you just wanted to like fry a couple enemies real quick and save some of your super. It, it actually saved some of your super and that's a cool <laughs> it mechanic. Retains yeah, I like that. It. So it was cool. Yeah. It's kind of a cool little feature, you know, they, they could yeah, have just you think said, of super you know like what? you use it or you're done, but yeah. that's kind of cool that you can. 
That's what most supers it. would have, but you know, that's yeah. kind of a cool feature that you can do that with that no other super has. It's, it's mm-hmm. neat. Um, they fix some issue where the overshield granted upon respawning in crucible would not negate damage right away. Um, what are some of the other big ones? They Let's did see. fix an issue with scout rifles where they weren't the firing at high impact scouts weren't firing at 150 RPM, which apparently was like through the entirety of season four. Yeah. Um, so, th- and then I believe high impact scouts now can three headshot guardians in the crucible. So, um, you may see more of those in PVP. Just a heads Indeed. up. I hear uh, Polaris Lance is back to its, uh, yeah former glory so i'm excited because yes. that's like my favorite scout yeah you you like Dude, that, that i love sure. that gun so much <laughs> um they did some tweaks to gwiz invest uh fix an issue where kills were not required to extend super uptime uh <laughs> that, in an issue where super was not extended after 10 or more kills uh chromatic fire man i want this exotic so much this is the warlock um uh what is it called? Chess piece that basically gives you firefly on everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, they've been having them to make some changes to that a little bit. So they fixed an issue where explosions were doing less damage than intended. Uh, I want to, I want to put that on with so many guns and apparently there's uh as part of the, some of the new black armory mods, there's a firefly mod now. Yes, there is. Dude. Yep. It, but what it does is, um, is it, uh, are you talking about the one that is like, um, is it called Firefly? It's like, um, oh, what's the name of that other perk? Dragonfly dude? or something? Dragonfly. There, the perk that I saw, what it said is, um, it increases the effectiveness of the Dragonfly perk. Maybe or that's whatever. what it was. So I it doesn't, it I thought there. it actually, and I don't know, maybe, maybe there's a different one too that, that, you you're talking about this one though you have to have the perk on your gun already and then it increases its effectiveness oh, okay um which is that's still really cool that might man. be what like it was that i saw pretty specific right I, I think it's cool just period we're getting new mods i mean mm-hmm. that's an, you don't really think about that adding more depth to the game but it's definitely cool it would be neat to regularly get new mods in the game right yeah so cool stuff uh, over in Gambit, besides fixing an issue with the uh, Senate Servitor Primeval giving the win to the wrong team, um, <laughs> they made another tweak with uh, ammo. Um, they've reduced the amount of ammo that linear fusion rifles receive from the power ammo crate in Gambit from five to three rounds. Sleeper Simulant still only receives two rounds. As well, players who die with fewer than two rounds of special ammo will now always respond with two rounds to help alleviate special ammo starvation. And then this was an interesting one. So they fixed an issue where players would be held in a loading screen if another player was inspecting items in inventory. <laughs> I so never random. knew what that was that was causing that, but apparently this is it. So now that's solved. Thank goodness. Uh, what did they have next? Let's see. Oh, did you? Okay, so Protheon, the swole jeweler yes, mine, yes, dude. Yes, yes, <laughs> So they, they brought this up in the patch. Fix an issue where Protheon, the modular mine, grew three times larger than intended in update 2.1.0. So everybody saw that and was like, wait, what? And they, they, uh, everybody was asking to see it. And so they put up a clip, uh, on Twitter and I think on Reddit where you could see it. and and yeah. Pertheon was just enormous, dude. He was it, yeah, like, he was massive. Like ribbon sized, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like if took you're up not that whole on, first on area. Media, you guys gotta go look it up. <laughs> so funny. So now everybody is is like asking, well when like when can we get like a week where we get huge bosses? You know? Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be so funny. it's so random too like what's going on in the code for him yeah to, what mean, exactly he, he would cause huge. just randomly cause uh, uh an enemy boss to just triple in size like what <laughs> <laughs> so strange man um they fixed an issue where morgoth the morgoth fight would cause uh destiny to crash thank goodness so 
we could go do that raid again without that trouble. Um, and then some general stuff they fixed. Uh, this was a big one. They fixed an issue where the Harbinger's Echo Sparrow was locked out for players who destroyed dragon eggs across multiple characters. So this is if um, you were in progress, like if you had not destroyed all the eggs yet, it would fix the issue. However, if you've already destroyed all the eggs and you did not get the sparrow, they have another fix for that scenario that's going to be coming in in the next patch. So if you completed all the eggs and you didn't get the sparrow, there should be a fix to that next week. And that's important if you're trying to get curse breaker, I think. So Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And to clarify too, the patch notes we're going over right now and as you're listening to this on Monday, priming grams they they patched it in more fre- uh, appear more frequently for 5 uh, guardians under 550 power. Mm-hmm. But what we were talking about earlier in the show, tomorrow on reset, right? Cyborg, that's when the patch is going to drop that it's actually going to be more yes. frequent p- priming grams for guardians 600 or Correct. lower, right? Okay. So, still 550 today, tomorrow 600 or less for you guardians that that aren't quite 600 yet. That's right. So, All go. right, and then they list a few other general issues, so go read through all those. So we don't have to read them all to you. You're welcome. (laughs) Uh, Maybe they'll put them in the game. (laughs) And I think that's all the news, man. That's all the big stuff. Yeah. We don't know yet who completed the Scourge yet first. None of that stuff yet. We're recording a little early, so forgive us, but we'll talk about it next week. Don't worry. Yes. And I'm sure they'll, like like I mentioned, there's secret stuff going on. They'll be more figured out. We may, depending on how fleshed out it gets, is how Cyborg and I decide if we're going to talk about it on the show yet. We don't like to spoil some things for you guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, yeah. man. Well, that's the news. That's the news, Cyborg. Uh, how was your reset, buddy? <laughs> My reset has been busy, man. You know, I kicked it off and... So we've got the first, you know, initial part of the Black Armory, right, that you've got to complete, which includes, Mm -hmm. you know, you're working on this different quest for a machine gun. So I kind of worked on that and then um, realized, okay, I've I've got to grind for power. So just jump back in that power grind, man, just wiping out all the challenges on my couple characters. I I can't do three, so I've just been working on two. And so I've done a couple raids. Um, I've done all kinds of stuff. I don't know. You name it. I've been doing it in destiny, <laughs> except for competitive. And, See, it, uh, it, was it, it's still fun, right? Like yeah, that, it's, that, that concept of having to do old content, like the reset just feels different now, right? Like you, yeah. you get in there and you, you do your reset routine. You go to these, right. these places and you do your thing, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you one thing, Gambit, super competitive this week. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Going That's into Gambit, yeah. people are like sweating hardcore in Gambit. There's just a lot of players uh, just chasing the pinnacle weapon, and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people I'm playing about to start the, that grind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking maybe like 15 matches away. I've, I've got most of the other, um, the other two requirements for it the uh, multi kills and the auto kills are almost done so i've just got to grind out some more matches and i'll have that gun i'm really looking forward to it because everybody is saying how awesome it is yeah that's what i've seen gotta get my hands on it though i'd really like Mm -hmm. to have it for the raid but i don't think i'm gonna be able to finish all those matches in time but um but yeah i mean that's kind of been my week so far is just like jumping on that power grind i'm um 612 at the highest right now. I, I gave a few shots to, like, you know, we talked about, I tried a little bit to uh, tackle the, the new forge and uh, mm-hmm. we got to the boss, you know, a few times and uh, yeah, it's, it's not tough once you get past like 606 to get through the first two waves. Uh, but that boss is meaty man. And there's like tons of ads just shredding you and if the boss shoots you, he, he has these missiles, you know, he just destroys you. So, <laughs> so we were kind of working on our strategy for that. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. Um, but it seems like, like the activity itself is kind of cool. It's, it, it's a fun, 
idea. And I'm interested to see what the other forges mechanics are going to be. Um, if they all like have the same mechanic where you kill the blue guys and throw the balls yeah, that's the or question if, right now, if it'll right? be something yeah. different or if it's just the bosses have different mechanics, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to know. I know that there's one image of a, a Titan holding a really big metal ball. So that there's mm -hmm. gotta be something else. Um, that we're going to see. I don't know though, what, you know, what round it's or phase it's going to be or anything like that, but, um, we'll find out. We'll see. Yeah. That's the question right now, right? It's like, we know they're going to be set in different places. You would, you, you think the mechanics are going to be different, but like the whole idea of the forge, you'd wonder if that's like kind of set in stone, what you do right. when you go in the forge. And like right. you said, maybe the boss's mechanics are different. Um, but I would think, I think you would think the plan would be for them to be different enough that it feels like you're doing something new, right? Yeah. So I did we'll get see. a new exotic, uh, last night on my warlock. I got controverse hold, which are, right. uh, warlock gauntlets. Yeah. And what they do is they, um, if you're charging your void grenade on any of the three, um, void attunements, uh, it makes you, uh, Da damage resistant so you you can take more damage and then mm -hmm. it um once you use the ability it gives you a random amount of your grenade energy back so okay. played a played a little bit around with it in uh crucible it was pretty cool nothing crazy overpowered but you know definitely a fun exotic to uh to play around with i, I want to see what kind of builds i can do with maybe uh like some melee, uh, grenade kind of loops, uh, to see if I can like just keep that ability rolling in PVE mm -hmm. or something. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit. Seems fun. Hey, if you got a new exotic, right? Yeah. I was happy about <laughs> some that. Guardians like, right, aren't one getting more, that. you know, <laughs> one more down. Like that means the next one will be new too. I did get, I don't know if I mentioned if I had it last week, but I finally got black talon. And that's oh, a pretty nice. fun yeah, little I still sword. Have that man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fun. That's a fun thing to kill people with. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, it's yeah, a little tricky. That. Like you got to be good to catch people off guard and like gambit when they're trying to shoot you with uh, Queen's Breaker. But if you can get the drop on somebody, it's fun just to throw a big energy wave at them and melt them with yeah. a sword oh, sure. <laughs> i'm still waiting man i want trinity ghoul to drop for me too oh like, yeah uh, man i just want to use great. that thing in, in in the game but uh i don't blame day. you i don't blame you well how was your reset what have you been up to oh it's good dude i um you know i was excited of course because the uh the annual pass is starting we got the forge i actually mm -hmm. i jumped in day one of that drop and completed the you know the initial quest you kind of had to go out and kill some things and do some stuff. I, I, um, am still grinding out for my Wayfarer title. So I needed, uh, two more. No, sorry. I needed one more armor piece. I needed the Titan helm, uh, in escalation protocols. The last thing I needed from escalation, dude, I'm talking over the last three weeks, maybe three, four resets. Yeah. I needed all the armor, but the Titan mark I needed all. I just got the shoddy. A few weeks ago, I grinded to get that. So I needed the sniper and the SMG. Like I needed so much stuff from Escalation yeah, yeah. Protocol. I just didn't play a ton of it. And uh, so anyways, man, like I've been just devoted like to, to knocking this out. I'm so, I don't know what it is. Like I, my drive to get Wayfarer is, is so like, it's because like you, you're close. Dude. You can taste it. Right. You know, yep. once you get yep. close, you're like, <laughs> oh man, like. I just got to do these couple things, especially like for me, just getting a title because people mm -hmm. were getting them. And I'm like, I, I got to have a t some title, man. Everybody's yep. getting these, knocking them out. Like, I don't want to be left out. Uh, so yeah, yeah you want that first yeah, it's one, big, man. dude. Yeah. And it's cool because a lot of people are starting to get them, but it's not really a lot though. Like there's still so many guardians that don't yeah. have them and maybe don't want even, aren't even trying to get them. So yeah. that's the, that's kind of the prestigeness of it, if mm -hmm. you will, is it's cool to, to get one. Like you said, like you want to get your first one to at least have one. And, uh, yeah, dude. So I, I, I did some escalation while also knocking out that, uh, black armory quest. Cause you know, you had to kill the, the yellow baddies and all that stuff. So I got my, uh, tight 
Titan Helm. I completed that quest so that I at least could get to the forge. Um, and then I went out, dude, I'm totally out of stems. I used like all 170 I had, and I still have two Braytech weapons that I need. So I, uh, I went and farmed just for four of them so that I could get one more. I don't even remember what they're called, what the, the, the blue is called that you get when you combine them. Um, but I went and I just got one node. I'm like, I just have this feeling. I haven't gotten a schematic in a while. I feel like if I just go get one tonight, I'll get a schematic. And sure enough, I got a schematic. And I, I'm like straight to Anna Bray. I'm like, please, please give me a weapon I don't have because I've gotten four of the jackals at this point, four of the snipers. And sure enough, dude, boom, got the uh, got the sidearm with a little help from my son. He actually opened the engram for me. And I was like, yes, dude, we got it. I got one. So all I need is the auto rifle. And I am done with Mars. It's not that nice. I want to be done with Mars. It's just I've nah, spent you so be done. much time <laughs> on Mars, dude. I have over 500 of the serif whatever the the material. It's like I've spent so much time on Mars. So I need I need the Braytech auto rifle. That's it. And then I need the blind well emblem. Yeah. And after that, I'm done with RNG. All I have to do is wait for two flashpoints to come up to get one adventure on each. Yeah. Um, and I have my Wayfarer. Like, I'm nice. so close, dude. And I'm so pumped. And I don't know. And we'll talk about, we got a question in uh, discourse about titles. But for me, dude, like, I just have had a blast uh, chasing this title. I'm, I'm interested to see once I get it. Like, I'm going to be so pumped and so excited. I'm, I'm going to, I'm wondering, I'm already thinking about, like, what I might, which title I might chase next. Mm-hmm. Um, but, dude, I, that, to me, I've just learned, like, the titles, for me, They've just added so much kind of fun to the grind, if you will. You're going to be grinding and doing the stuff anyways. It's cool to get real specific like you have to with the titles and figure out what you have to grind, actually specifically grind. Mm -hmm. And I've just, I don't know, I've had a good time chasing Wayfair. So um, again, like you said, I'm getting so close now and I'm just, I want it like I'm ready to have it. Um, But other than that, man, like that's, I jumped in and even started grinding away at that on, on day one when Black Armory dropped. I did. Like I said, I got to the forge. It was, I think, the day or two after. I think it was the day after. It was yesterday. I did jump in, and I match made. That's another thing we didn't mention, too. It's cool. It is cool that they made the forge matchmaking. I do like that because I play a lot solo. Um, of course, right now, a lot of Guardians are under-leveled, so it's it's a bit rough. But I did jump in with some random Guardians, and uh, we made it to the second wave. I haven't made it to the boss phase yet. I've only ran it like three or four times, but that's something I, I want to do over the weekend. I want to try and get that unlocked so I can get access to all the stuff at yeah. 8 of 1 and, and all that good stuff. So, you know, man, just the, the usual reset. I did do a little bit of power grinding. Um, I kind of did some stuff on Dreaming City on my Titan and my Hunter, but my my focus right now isn't even like to increase my power. I, I'm so focused on my title, man. Like I want to get the RNG aspect out of the equation. So then all I have to do is wait for those flashpoints. Yeah. Um, so anyways, man, that's, that's what I've been up to. I've been, I've been having fun, man. Like there's definitely the, the hobbyist stuff to work on. And even with, you know, new content dropping, it's, I still like have the drive to go do that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm having a good time, dude. Good time. Good. Yeah, I can't wait till we can talk next week about the forges and <laughs> what they're yeah, actually yeah. like once you beat yeah. them and what else there is to do and the raid, you know, yeah, weapons we'll and stuff one. that uh, mm-hmm. that we can earn stuff. So we'll have more to and talk armor, about. right? People yeah. are figuring out how to get the armor to drop and all that with the. Yeah her weeklies and stuff like that. So there's definitely much more to explore with that initial forge. So sure. it'll be, I, I probably do need to focus a little bit more on my, my actual power so that I can get that completed, yeah. but uh, grind it out. So right, anyways, man. Man. well, how about some dirt fam discourse before we end the show? Yeah, let's do it. We got an email this week, actually just mentioned it because it's about titles. Yeah. Um, it's from our good buddy, Quentin. we got a few emails from Quentin that, Subject is more incentive for titles. Ever since the introduction of titles, I've never really seen a really good reason to get the titles. Now that Forsaken has been out for three months and we are heading into the Black Armory, I've been seeing a lot more Guardians with titles. But but that got me thinking, what next? If I'm going to grind for the titles, I'm going to need more of an incentive to get these titles. What if there were specific quests, bounties, armor, weapons, etc.? If there were anything else tied to the grind, then it would be worth it. 
There needs to be an end game goal for titles, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Love to hear from you guys on the next resets. That's an interesting question, dude. Um, I'm going to let you have at it because this is a perspective that I hadn't really thought of. And I actually, I don't, I just kind of talked about it. I actually, I, I'm kind of on a different wavelength with the titles. I'm interested to hear what you think about that. I, I think, I think Quentin's perspective is probably not totally uncommon, but I think the way he's looking at it is these are cool, but what does it do for me? And Mm -hmm. they're totally there as, as just a thing for bragging rights. Like the title is the reward, you know? Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't do it for you, then the titles really weren't there for you. Like Mm -hmm. you can do all the end game activity and those are the the things where you get tangible rewards, um, you know, pinnacle weapons and, um, you know, the 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 great raid stuff that you can earn and a thousand voices and like things that are hard to get that are like the physical representations of what you've done. The mm-hmm. titles are really just there as another layer of like a way to show off your experience. It's it's not a reward besides the bragging rights. So if, if it's like, if you're not into like being able to show off your investment, then it's probably not gonna, it's not gonna stick with you. And I think probably this is what Quentin's relating is like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is a lot of work. What does it do for me? Well, that's it. The work is the reward, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. It was, it, yeah. This, his perspective is, is I guess something I didn't consider because for me, it's really the complete opposite. Like as long as I'm okay with more and more guardians getting the titles, as long as they are quite the accomplishment, right? Like you have to do quite a bit of stuff and they're very specific um, in whichever activity, you know, whether it's gambit or whatever you're trying to get it for. You're like, mm-hmm. what they show is like where you spent your time. Like I, like I said last week, I think I went and looked at the titles and I'm like, okay, which one do I want? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Wayfair is it for me. Wayfair is what I want first. It's what I want right now. And you're exactly right. The reward is the grind and the, the dedication to get it and then to show it off. Right. And as long yeah. as that's there and it's not like an easy thing to get, I think that is important. Now he did get me thinking about. If you are a hobbyist level guardian and the titles like really don't do it for you, then that is an aspect of the hobbyist level that you just don't get. Right. And yeah. and again, it's it's player preference. You know, if, if if they don't do it for you, they don't do it for you. But there's a lot of depth that they add to the game and chase and drive to want to play it. It's been my drive for the last three or four weeks. So if it's not there for you, I definitely feel for him because it's adding a lot to the game for well, me. Well, the thing is, if it's him, not right? doing it for you, then it's no different than it was before Forsaken. Like, you didn't have the it, stuff right? is in the game to do it and to have mm-hmm. it. Right. And the titles are icing on the cake. It's a new layer, and mm-hmm. it's not for everybody, is my opinion, you know? Yeah. I do think it's important, though. It's very important. If, if these things weren't hard to get, and everybody had them. Let's say a good comparison would be exotics. I mean, we all kind of want a few more exotics right now, but you had all the exotics in vanilla D2 like pretty quick. And they just, like you just went on a, a couple minute description about the exotic you got because you were excited you got one. I don't think we would have done that in D2 because everybody had all the exotics so quick, right? So the important thing is they stay hard to get and, and require a lot of dedication to get them. If they don't have that, then they lose the appeal they have right now. Right. right? Yeah. And I, I honestly, I don't want any, I don't want any gear tied behind these things. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want them to just remain a, a title. Yeah. I don't want an emblem. I don't want anything. Like, I think it just needs to be exactly what it is. And because if you start sticking gear behind it, then it, it changes like why you do it. And, the motivation and like what people are grinding for. I don't know. I think that that would frustrate me if there was gear I couldn't get behind a title right now. I get that. I like, there's two titles I can't get because of RNG 
but I'm okay with it because it's just a title. But if there, if like 1,000 voices was locked behind, you know, Game Ribbons, Ribbons Bane or something, I would be super frustrated, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, what would be cool is like an ornament or something. That might, that might be cool. You get the title, you get an ornament, um, for something. But again, you know, I think like the title, right now, you wear it, you put it on, people see it. I think that's all you need. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. Like there's plenty of drive there for me. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about Quentin's perspective, you know, like you said before Forsaken, you didn't have the title. So you just have something extra if you want to do it. But again, it is adding depth for a lot of guardians. And if it's not your thing, it is some depth you're missing out on. Again, it's player preference. So I, I hope that you find Quentin like a drive to do the titles because, you know, for me, and it seems like Cyborg as well, like just getting it is like i'm dude i don't know what it is but like i'm looking forward to logging in every day and trying to knock out another little step of getting my wayfarer um and it's i don't know it's it is adding a lot of drive to the game for me just in their current state right now so well um, thanks for the but email, we always Quentin. welcome perspectives yeah, yeah. right like we want to know I appreciate what you your think. perspective if you want to send us an email or a speak pipe you can send an email destiny reset podcast at gmail.com or you can send us a speak pipe, which is like a voicemail, speakpipe.com slash destiny reset. Uh, now's the time where we give some shout outs to our patrons. We've got quite a few this week since they uh, sent us all their usernames. Who we, who's our new patrons? We got, yeah, several. We got one from Chezzy, I believe, Joshy 2 k LD Fades, and Eganator all right. for this week. You guys are awesome. Thanks, guys. We appreciate that. If you don't know what a patron so is, go to patreon.com slash destiny reset, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the production budget of our show. You get a couple of uh, perks. If you do become a patron, you get a shout out on the podcast. You get your gamer tag posted on our website. And finally, you get an invitation to our Discord channel just for Dirt Fan patrons and supporters. Yes. And just a heads up, guys, uh, we have gotten a couple messages that it's not auto adding guardians to that channel that specific channel in our discord if it doesn't you don't see the patrons and supporters channel show up in the discord server for you let us know because we can manually add you to that server we're trying to figure that out right now why that's not working properly yeah just a heads up let us know let us know let us know let us know <laughs> You're um so clever yeah you know, I just like to sing stuff. You do. You should do it more often. Where can people find you? You can find me on all the things, but mostly, specifically, the most content I drop is Twitter, at Aeronite, and on YouTube as well. Aeronite Gaming. I've been posting stuff pretty regularly lately. Yeah, man. You've been banging out some videos, so. Trying to do one a week, man. I, I'm, great. I got another one probably already up as you're listening right now. So I appreciate anybody checking out my YouTube channel. What about you, dude? Very cool. You can find me at Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter. Also worth mentioning, I always forget to bring this up. I am on another podcast. I haven't yes. plugged it for a long time, but if you want to hear about um, all things nerds like, it's the best way I can describe it. Uh, <laughs> go check out Splash Damage Radio. Uh, I co-host with my buddies uh, Better Off Blue and Shaka Khan. And we just talk about movies, games, TV shows, uh, sci-fi, like just anything. I mean, that we just recently did an episode on uh, D and D. Uh, well, I was out, but they they had a uh, Furion on, <laughs> and they they talk D and D. I mean, we just cover just whatever we're into, and so it's a wide berth. But um, you know, maybe something there that you enjoy, a uh, li little more casual. You know, just open setting and uh we'd love to have you come and take a listen if you if you're looking for that type of podcast so it's splash damage radio is the show you can find it anywhere uh podcasts can be heard and uh you can follow us on twitter at splash damage rad do it guardians if yep. you i'm sure you listened a couple episodes ago and you probably picked up on it but if you didn't blue that was on the show is yeah yeah, yeah. Blue, if you found him entertaining yeah, if you're yeah. one of the few that can, <laughs> that can get He's into that. Guy. I'm just kidding. Yes. Uh, finally, you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter and on the web, DestinyResetPodcast.com. Um, thank you as well if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate your reviews. If you're listening and you do listen on an iTunes or Apple Podcast device, please go leave us a review. It helps us get seen and heard by more listeners. Yeah, dude. Well over 
200 at this point. So we thank you guys so much. That's amazing. That dropped us a review. Very yeah, much man. appreciated. All right, dude. All right. That's the show. We uh, we uh, were talking before we started. Like, we want to record. We want to get this out to you guys. We love releasing the show, but we also want to play Destiny. So <laughs> we, <laughs> we got to log off, sign off, and go log into Destiny, right? That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Until next reset, have fun playing Destiny 2, and take care, Guardians. <laughs>